Father God in heaven, I want to thank you for this day, for, for life, love, and for your son, Lord. I pray that as we read your word, that you may be, be with our minds and our hearts, allow us to see, see your truth, Lord. This is our prayer. In Jesus Christ, holy name we do pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going over the number 80, which is four score. In the first place, I saw it um, was in Exodus 7, where Moses goes into Pharaoh when he's, when he's four score years old. So um, I started running it through, through the concordance and the Bible, says Wise Writings. And throughout the Bible, you see a running theme where it's dealing with the image of the beast, or unlawful marriage, or um, church and state, and judgment upon a king or a kingdom. So, and it also brings you to midnight and midnight cry. It shows a lot of things, and it's hard to pinpoint one thing for this study. So I'm just gonna basically show is gonna show line up to midnight and midnight cry, and um, yeah, it's just many things, and I would like y'all to also study it, to look look through it for yourselves and see what God leads you to. So um, first I'll go through, I'm going through the line of Moses and I'm placing Moses, Judges 3, Uzziah, which is 2 Chronicles 26, and Ezra 8, which leads back to Ezra 7, 9. Um, I'm going to place these four lines, <clears throat> excuse me, on our line and see how it deals with us. And um, first we'll go to Exodus 1:15. And it says, and the king of Egypt spake, 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 spake to the Hebrew midwives of which, which the name of the one was Shifra and the name of the other Pua. So when I look up Shifra in the concordance, it brings to H8235, H8, meaning brightness or garnish. And Pua bring, brings you to the same thing, but it brings you to 86326. Those two midwives, their names mean the same exact thing. So first thing I thought, I have two of the same names that would bring you to Midnight Midnight Cry because that is, you have two, two of the same <clears throat> meanings. Excuse me. So um, when you look it up in, in the concordance, you can see that it brings you to Job 26, verse 12 and 13. And it says, he divided the sea with his power, and by his understanding he smiteth through the proud. And verse 13 says, by his spirit he hath, he hath garnished the heavens, his hand, hath, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. So when I read these verses, I was thinking, who done these things in their time period? And it brings me back to Moses, because Moses smite, smite the proud, which is Pharaoh, and he divided the sea in, in, in his power, which is the Red Sea. And he held a crooked serpent, which is the rod that turned, turned to a serpent. So these midwives in the beginning show, a, show what Moses will do in his lifetime. All right. So now going to verse 15, 16, sorry, of ex excuse me, Exodus 1. And I'm going to go to 16 to I think 21. <clears throat> and it says here, and he said, when, when, ye, when ye do do the office of a midwife to, to the Hebrew woman and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But, but the midwives feared God. When I saw the fear of God, the first thing that came to my mind is the first angel's message. So we know the birth of Moses is at the time of the end. So I'm going to put birth of Moses. And you see the first angel's message, fear of God. Continuing on, um, it says, and did not as, as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, men, children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have ye done this? And, and have, have saved the men, children alive. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for, for they are lively and are, and, and are 
delivered ear, the midwives come, come in unto them. <clears throat> Verse 20, therefore God dealt, dealt with, 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 therefore God dealt with the midwives and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass because, because the midwives fear God that, that he made them houses. <clears throat> so Exodus chapter one, from verses 16 to 21, I can see the first, the first angel's message, which fear God, give him glory for the hour of judgment has come because you have the fear of God, the midwives fear in God. There's two midwives. So that's the second angel's message showing, showing, yeah, showing the second angel's message and God dealt with them. Anytime God deals with something, that's judgment. And God judged them and deemed them worthy, which, and then God gave them houses. So at the time of the end, you can see the first angel's message in its fullness going with um, Moses. So now we can go to Exodus 3, chapter two, um, 3, verse 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it said, this is speaking about Moses at the burning bush. So it says, and the, land, and, the, and the angel of the Lord appeared. So if an angel is appearing, you can see an angel coming down. And we're going to go through and see how this is the second angel's message, because this doubling of Moses, Moses in verse 4. Um, verse 2, it says, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and, and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Also, another thing I just noticed that the word behold is visual. You have to see it. Anytime the Bible says behold, you're looking at something. So that's another witness to the second angel's message. And then jump down to verse four. It says, and when the Lord saw that he turned, he turned aside to see God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. So see, 96 which is the burning bush, which is the formalization also. It's the formalization and this angel coming down. It's the second angel because you have Moses, Moses. Um, one second. All right. Now jump down to verse eight and it says, and I am come down to Deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out out of that land onto a good land and a large onto a land flowing with milk and honey onto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. I'm going to make a claim now where I'm thinking that <clears throat> based upon. No, we, we'll, we'll see it later, but I'm thinking these six kingdoms represent the sixth kingdom. Because God is bringing them into a land flowing with milk and honey, bringing them to a glorious land so that they can worship God. It's the same thing with the U.S. where God brought, brought, the, God brought the reformers out of Europe and Germany and all those places over to, to the U.S. so that they can worship God in, in its fullness. And yeah. All right. And we're going to come back to this verse in Judges 3. And now we're going to see kind of a parallel in our time where... Um, God brings them into a country and now God has to, to help them get out of that country because now that country has turned against them. Same way in our time where they brought us, God, God brought us into the U.S. and now the U.S. will turn, turn against us or we will follow the U.S., follow, yeah, follow U.S. and now we have to be brought out of that same country in a way, not in a literal way, like we're going someplace else. Um, <clears throat> Oh, another thing I want to point out is that this is where Moses gets his rod. And um, actually, hold on, I'm jumping in too much. All right, let's go to Exodus 4.1. We'll read about that. So chapters 3 and 4 are speaking of the burning bush. <clears throat> Um, you can see that the Lord says in verse number 12 of chapter 3, he says, and he says, certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Mm -hmm. So God gave Moses a message at the formalization, and he's telling them, when you come out of Egypt, 
you're going to come back to this very same spot, 96. So that message is very important. You're going to come back to this very message. Amen. But he also he gave him three evidences. Two of them are visual, and one of them he had to believe it by faith that it was going to happen. One of them was the the rot turning into snake. The second one was his arm turning into leprosy and bringing it back. Yeah. And the third one, it was yet to come, was when the river was going to turn Touch into blood. blood. But Amen. that was not visual. So two are visual, one was not. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, um, we're going to see later on in this time period when Moses four score. In this time period or this time period, because this is the same and this is the same. So he's going to come back to here because he uses the rod and his leprous hand to deem judgment, to cast judgment upon Pharaoh in this time period. So Exodus 4 and 1, it says, and Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not, they will not believe me nor, nor hearken unto my voice for 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 they will say the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And, and the Lord said unto him, what is, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. Moses fled from it. And, and the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by, by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may, that they may, Believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. <clears throat> so we know in the story of Moses that Moses used the rod. He lifted up the rod to, um, to make the plagues come down. And what I'm, what I'm inferring here is that the leprous hand is God giving Moses the power to cast judgment upon a nation. And because we'll see in the next quote from Sister White that it is a symbol of the finger of God. And only God can, only God can judge. So now God gave Moses the power to judge a nation. So I'm going to read from Desire Ages 262, paragraph 1. Zara Ages 262.1, and it says, Of all diseases known, known in the East, the leprosy was, the, was most dreaded. Its incurable and contagious character and its horrible effect upon its victims filled the bravest with fear. Among the Jews, it was regarded as a judgment on account of sin, and hence was called the stroke, the finger of God. Deep-rooted, ineradicable, deadly, it was looked, looked upon as a symbol of sin. So we can see here at the burning bush, the formalization of the message that Moses received these, these two things, the rod and the leprous hand, which is the power of God. Both actually are, are, are the power of God. Um, so now we go to Exodus 7.7. 7. And it says, and Moses was fourscore years old and Aaron fourscore and three years old when they spake unto Pharaoh. And Elder Jeff placed at the camp meeting, I can't remember which presentation he did it in, but he placed the plagues from the, the plagues one through six here and I think seven to ten in here. So if Moses is 80 years old when he when he goes into Pharaoh, that means he had to be 80 from here at midnight. Midnight or midnight cry based upon which, which line looking at, the priests or the Levites. So I would 80 here or 80 here. And he's casting judgment upon Pharaoh, Pharaoh of Egypt, because he's not allowing the, Hebrew, the Hebrews to <clears throat> worship God in the correct way. They were worshiping the idols and eating foods that were not, not, not of Christ. Christ's plan. All right. Now we're going to Judges 3. And Judges 3 um, is a chapter that has much meat in it. And 
it, you can glean a lot of things from it. A lot of gems are within Judges 3. Um, so as a result, It was? Yeah. One to three. One to three was from Midnight Cry? Because it's, yeah. And then the rest. Everybody. Yeah. It was three. Oh, it was seven. everybody and then. Yeah, everybody and, and then. And then specific. Okay, all right. I apologize for that then. Thank you for correcting me. Please, I'm over for corrections for anything. So. Ten. All right. But still, it's, it still stays the same where the plagues are still being cast down upon Egypt with um, Moses being 80, 80 years old in either time period, how, how, however you want to look at it. It can also go to son law to close probation, too. Depends on the fact that you're looking at it. Um, can I ask? I, I don't understand what you're, what you're doing with your 80s up there. I don't understand the 80s that you put above the 1 to 3 and how you're lining them up there. Um, Moses, was, Moses was this age when he came, came into Pharaoh, and he came to Pharaoh with a message, and we know that the faithful priests go into the kings with a message at a certain time. And this, and this time is at midnight. Midnight also still goes through, goes through onto the close probation, which um, <clears throat> could be at midnight, midnight cry, son of law, what, whatever class you're looking at. What about your other 80, though? Yeah, this, this 80 here was just, just, to see, um, just to show which one, if it's priests or Levites. That's all it was. So it's just the repeat of the midnight to the midnight. Yeah, time. basically. It's the okay. same, same repeat over and over. Um, yeah, going back to um, Judges 3, in, one second, think, verse, in verse 30, the land rests for four score years, but prior to the land resting, resting for four score years, God has to deliver Israel again from two, two nations. And, um, no, we'll, we'll just read verse 5, 5 to, tw 5 to 12. Verse 5 says, And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. These are the same six nations that God brought his people into. And now, and now you see that God has to bring them out of these, the same nation, the sixth nation nation which I'm saying which I'm seeing this as the uh, the United States and um verse 6 and says and they and they took and they took their daughters to be their wives and 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 gave and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served Balaam and the groves so you already know this is unlawful marriage it, you have Hebrews marrying people from these six other nations or nations abroad or around them, wherever. So, you know, that's an unlawful marriage, which shows the image of the beast. And if they forgot the Lord, they had to forget the Sabbath also. So, and the Sabbath says, remember the Sabbath day. So you can see here that, um, one second. You see here that could be an image of the beast here. I'm gonna put I I'm gonna put IOB for image of the beast and MOB for mark of the beast or mark of the beast here. Or could be an image of the beast here, then the mark of the beast from Sunday Law. Let me put it smaller. Sunday Law onward. Depends on the factor you're looking at. So have the unlawful marriage, then the mark, or the unlawful marriage, then the mark, which is Sunday Law. And you already know here. At Midnight Cry is going to be a Sunday law, the first Sunday law, the first state Sunday law in, in the United States. And <clears throat> all right, we're going to go to verse 8 then. Continuing on to verse 8, it says, Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the land of Cushan Rishthaim, king of Mesopotamia, and the children of, children of Israel served Cush. Cush and Rish Thayim, eight years. And when you look up Cush and Rish Thayim, um, his, his, it comes from H3573, and it means double wickedness. So you have a doubling there already, 
So you already know this is gonna be placed at midnight or midnight cry. And you have to serve, and they and Israel served the king of Mesopotamia for eight years. So if he served them for eight years, where does the eight go? Sunday long. All right. So the eight, you can see an eight there where the Israelites served this king. Going on to verse nine, it says, And the children of Israel cried, cried unto the Lord. The Lord raised up a, a deliverer to, to the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. I just saw it just now. I'm not sure if this would be considered a doubling where it says the Lord, the Lord, because it's a commentary and it could, it's just there to break, break it. But it says the Lord, the Lord. Um, continuing on verse 10, it says, <clears throat> And the Spirit of the Lord came, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and, and went, went out to war. And the Lord delivered Cushan, Cushan Rish Thayim, king, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cushan Rish Thayim. And the land rested, and, and the land had rest 40 years, and Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. So, and put, um, remember, it's gonna land. Land's gonna rest for 40 years. I'm not, I'm not saying this is the 40 at all, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm just putting 80 here, the 40 here, so we can see later on what I'm gonna bring out after. Um, all right. Verse 12, and it says, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And now, <clears throat> Othniel dies, and they go back doing the same thing they did before. So that's what I'm seeing it as, the image here and a marker here, and then they do it again, so image here, mark here. Um, and now, God raises up Ehud, and that's in verse 15. But, and, and, ver and verse 15 says, but when, when the children of Israel cried, cried, is this it? Sorry. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised, raised them up a, a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gerah, a Benjamite, a man left-handed, and, and by him the children of Israel sent a present unto, unto Eglon, the king of Moab. So now Ehud is raised up, and, um, and he has a message to give to the king of Moab. So yet again, we see in, whenever the 80 is involved in a story or in, in a book, book of the Bible, you, you have God having someone raised up to give a message to a king. Now going, um, one second. Okay. And jumping down to Judges 3.26, because I don't want to go through the whole thing, because in the whole book of, the whole, the whole chapter of 3, it has a lot of things you can put in it, and I don't want to bring out some of them things at this moment. I just want to try to keep it as simple as possible and just show how it's always bringing you to midnight, midnight cry. Um, now go to verse 26. And it says, And Ehud escaped while they tarried and passed beyond the quarries and escaped unto Saroth. And now, when you look up Saroth in the concordance, one second, you look up Saroth in the concordance, it brings you to H8167, and it means roughness. And then that goes to H8166, which brings you to she goat. Then that goes to H8163, which means he goat. And now when you get down to the, the final meaning of that word, it brings you to H8175, which means fear, tempestuous, come like a whirlwind. And it references back to Daniel 1140. So what I'm thinking here is that the message from here it's gonna be, hold on, let's move this, hold on. Message from here 
is going to be used here or here to go in to the kings and tell them and, and to bring a message to, to, to the kings at midnight or midnight cry. Yeah, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, because, forgive me for that, because from here, apologize. Message from 96, when, when the time to end, magazine was put, put into, put, put out, and so, let me get my thoughts together. So the message from here will be given here, here to the kings that will kill, kill the king. Yes. So go really slow on 26. Ehu escapes while they tarry. He escapes into Seraph. How does that line up with 96 to midnight? I don't understand. Maybe I'm the only one, but I just completely don't understand how you're getting that logic. When you look up the word Seraph. Okay, so you've got your definition, mm -hmm. your whirlwind definition. Yeah. So that's allowing you to place it at 96? Or how, how are you placing it? this action starting in 96. The concordance refers you back to Dan 1140. It tells you to go there because it mean, it's showing that Sarath means the same thing as fear and hold on, means the same thing as come like a whirlwind in Dan 1140. Okay, so you're marking Daniel 1140 at 1996, so anytime you see a reference to whirlwind, you're allowed to place a start point in 96? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying based upon this, this one word, where it's showing where where it tells you to go back to Daniel 1140. I guess I don't understand. Not that. sure if that's I'm all right. clear enough, but um, we can try to clear it up. Say, say it one more time. Yeah. Um, the root word of Sarath, the final it comes from H8175, which means fear, tempestuous, come like a whirlwind, hurl as a storm, and the concordance refers you back to Daniel 1140. Yeah, with with that word, the uh, concordance tells you to go back to Dan eleven forty, and Dan eleven forty is speaking about the king of the north, the king of the south. We, yeah, we already know. <clears throat> so. So I I have a problem with the placement of that in ninety six. I'm just gonna say. Oh, you saw that. We're placing ninety six. I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. And verse twenty six of Judges three. It says Ehud, I don't know what his name means, escaped while they tarried. While they tarried. So to me, immediately you have to look for a tarrying time. Okay, I understand United. That. It means united. Okay, Ehud means united. But I'm saying immediately, if you're seeing there's a tarrying going on, don't you have to at least be within the tarrying time to place this there? Or do you? I, all right, I, I, I understand that. But to go with what, what you're saying, you can still see like the message that the priest picked up from here. It's going to be the message given here and here. But were they tearing here in 96? No, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing that in 9-11. Because the tearing time is from here onward to Sunday law. So the message from here that, that the priests saw from back here, they're going to go to the kings in midnight, midnight cry time period. Does that make, make more sense? No. All right. Um, jumping on to verse 30. It says, so Moab was subdued that day, that day under the hand of Israel and the land rested and, and the land had rest four score years. So you have two times in Judges three where the land rests. So the first time the land rests for 40 then after it rested for 80, which will bring you to 120. And we know the 120 shows from 9-11 to midnight cry. Let me just. Um, this is the 120 here of the land resting. <coughs> um, so then why don't you put verse 26 at 9-11? What's preventing you from doing that? I'm, nothing. Okay. Nothing is. I, I could, it can't be placed at 9-11 because the priests that take the message from here, the, the priests learn, learn about a message that came at here and take it here to give to bring in to the kings at midnight, midnight cry. So I have no problem placing at 9 11 either. Yeah, I see what, I see what yeah, you're I saying. Yeah, I understand what though. you're saying, though. And yeah, I, I think one thing you possibly mentioned the message from 96 is the message of 9 11. So as she's yep. saying, for you and myself, we was not there in 96. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. We came in under 9-11, which is the same message as we're stating, the way marks only move over. The two become one. Mm -hmm. So the message of 96 is at 9-11 towards what Sister Bronwyn is saying, and that's where you can place this verse in now, because you have a, a tarion right there. Okay. And the tarion is there to make a way of escape. Well, apologize for not explaining it correctly. Prior but. to that, <coughs> sorry, can I, prior to that, basically, Elhu El, El, El comes there because he said he's got a message from God. Mm -hmm. So he's delivering a message. Yeah. For 9 11. Exactly. Seems like it, but yeah. I don't know. I'm not no, familiar I, with I, Judges I, I, I would agree with you that it seems like it's more 9 11. Yeah. But I'll also say this is the first time I've really seen 1996 with you you guys bringing it up um, in this way on the lines. I'm not super familiar with it, so I don't really know. Even the second angel coming down at 1996, I can say I'm not really familiar with this theory that you're presenting. It's probably just me getting behind on the message, but I, I don't know. It's not something we've been teaching in the past, am I correct? Yeah, I understand that. Uh, yeah. So are you are you doing 1996 and 9/11 as midnight midnight cry where they're they're a point and a period or how are you approaching that? That's not what my aim is for this study exactly. I'm okay. just showing um, how the 80s are showing a message going to the kings or image of the beast, unlawful marriage, midnight. Um, yeah, basically those, okay, those those things. Yes, sir. If I've, if I've understood the logic from the last little bit, last couple of days or whatnot, the way I've seen it at least is that from 1989, 1989 is the first angel's message, it's the first step. Mm -hmm. 1996 is the second step from to 9-11, and the third step is 9-11 where a group has passed by. So if you have the first, second, and third angel's messages in there for the leadership, then you must have at least a type of the second angel's message mm -hmm. okay. within there. And, that, and I think from what I've understood, 96 is representing, um, or at least has been explained to represent the second angel's message in that history. Though, obviously it's all on a bigger scale, it's all part of the first angel's message. Um, it's just a fractal, I guess. Yeah. So it's for a different group, basically. Yeah. It's, it's a different, it's, yeah. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry for not explaining correctly. No, I'm not, not back that, that's all. Um, Okay, I don't have much time left, so I'm going to try to run through this. Well, I know everybody knows the story of Uzziah, 2 Chronicles 26. Um, let's go to verse 17 of 2 Chronicles 26. <clears throat> 17 of 2 Chronicles 26. And it says... Azariah the priest went in after him, and the him is you know you know as King Uzziah, and 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 with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. So here you have another another um uh, hold on. you here you have the priest named Azariah and the king named Uzziah, which his name is also Azariah. So we have two, you have a doubling again of Azariah. So you already know that brings you to. Midnight, midnight cry. So you can, in a fractal again, it could be the priest of the Levites to, um, line. I'm not like solidified on this one thing. This is something I'm just, I just now started studying now, and now I've seen it for probably only like a week or two. So you see, he coming with the 80 priests. This is, yeah, the 80, 80 men. So from midnight, midnight cry, coming to give a message to a king, King Uzziah. Um, and now we know that he gets leprosy in his forehead, which is symbolizing the mark of the beast. So you already know, like again, again, like we have here, it could be the image here, image of the beast. Let me not put it there. Could be the image of the beast here, which is church and state together, unlawful marriage again, where a king is in a sanctuary, which leads to a mark, mark of the beast. Sorry. which leads to a mark here, or you can see it as the image here, and the mark at the Sunday Law, because you already know, may not cry, it's the first state Sunday Law, which is the mark of the beast also. Um, 
Also, you can see that Uzziah, this, in the time of Uzziah, it's a two-horn power because Uzziah is reigning with his son, Jotham, also. So it's a two-horn power. So it's showing you again, it, it's pointing to the, to the um, United States. And... Um, Verse 17, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. This is, this is the priests coming in with 80 valiant men and to, to, to go speak to King Uzziah to give him a message that what you're about to do is not, it's not, not for your glory, glory or your honor. It's going to just basically end up killing you. True, yeah, it is okay. anyone. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to read from Prophets and Kings, page 304, paragraph 2. <clears throat> PK 304, paragraph 2. And it says, Neither his exalted position nor, nor his long life of service could be pleaded as an excuse for the presum presumptuous sin by which he marred the closing years of his reign and brought upon himself the judgment of heaven. And we already saw from Zara Ages, page 262, that, that leprosy was the finger of God and it is the judgment on account of sin. So now you see here again that based upon PK 304, paragraph 2, it is the judgment from heaven, which is the judgment of God, which is the finger of God upon Uzziah. So now we're going to read from Reviewing Herald, October 16th, 1888, paragraph 8. Reviewing Herald, October 16th, 1888, paragraph 8. And it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, so in the same year that he died, Isaiah was permitted in vision to, to look into the holy place and into the holy of holies in the heavenly sanctuary. So you already know, you get the Mara, Mare vision at midnight. So again, it's showing more, it, there's more showing that this is gonna be placed at midnight or midnight cry, where, um, where you get your Mare, Mara vision, and you're, you have a message to give to the kings. All right, now this is my last witness um, I'm gonna bring in, and it's from Ezra 8.8. <clears throat> And it says, and of the sons of Shaphatia, Zebeda, I'm not sure how to pronounce these names, the son of, the son of Michael, hmm? Zebedea, the son of Michael, and with him four score males. So this is when this, this chapter is bringing, is bringing forth all of the all of the ones that, res that came back from Babylon, which is when they got up from Babylon, it's the first day of the first month, and that's at 9-11. And they, now they came back from Babylon, and now they reached Jerusalem on when? First day, fifth month. So now, so now we, we already know, um, one second. Yeah, so the first day, fifth month is midnight cry. And again, you can see another 80 in this time period. So just mark that 80 here. And now we're going to see what happens on the first day, fifth month. And we're going to go to. Deuteronomy 10, 6, 10, 6 and verse 8. And it says, and the children of Israel took their, took their journey from Baroth of, of the children of Jacon to Mo, Moseria. There Aaron died and there he was buried. And, and Eliezer, his son, ministered in the priest's office in his stead. Verse 8, and it says, at, 
at that time, the Lord, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear to bear the ark, ark, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him and to bless in his name unto this day. So we already know that Levites come in from midnight cry onward. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what you're doing with 80 because in chapter 8 is listing the chief of their fathers and is giving you from each of their chiefs how many people came from each uh, chief. So really the total is not just 80. No, I'm not, I'm not saying the total is 80. No? I'm not saying everybody is 80 no, because... But the number 80 that you get to get there uh, and you put Levi, uh, actually Sister White, okay, I, don't, I don't understand why you... Because he, the whole chapter of 80 gives you a list of different numbers from different chiefs. Mm -hmm. And at the end, that would be the total of them that came out out of Babylon. So I'm just trying to understand why are you just putting 80 there? In this chapter, it's bringing forth all of those that left, left on the first day, first month, and reached on the first day, fifth month. And I'm, I'm not saying that all of them are just are just four, four score and all. It's just, um, it's just showing that anytime you see number 80 or anytime you see four score in the Bible, you can see that it's referring to midnight cry or midnight. Excuse me? Yes, yeah, the symbol. Yeah, that's all it is. It's not, it's not, yeah, it's not like having literally only that amount of people. It has to be only that amount all the time. I'm not stuck on just, it has to be 80 only. It's just it's bringing like forth um, the midnight, midnight cry. Anytime you see it, it's going to, Bring forth from midnight, midnight cry. Four scores. There's actually four scores plus a couple of people, so I think it's 82. So I, it's, I don't understand that. I, why are you just separating that from the other two that I mentioned there? Um, yeah, there were two, there's 200 males, there's 300 males. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a countless yeah, I mean, there's amount. So many yeah, there's countless amount. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying it's only 80. I'm yeah. saying that four score is a symbol yeah. showing that it's going to bring you to midnight, midnight cry. In within that story, or within the chapters that is connected with that story, because mm -hmm. in Exodus three with with Moses, that 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 story goes on for for chapter three and four, with, but it's still one one event. Just because it's different chapters doesn't mean it's the it's um a different story. Go yeah, go ahead. Mm. Four score is just like like we have stated, like it's a symbol. So mm -hmm. it's bringing us to other things. So it's basically a, a four score is being like a door that can open up to mm -hmm. um, what's going on between midnight and midnight cry. Mm -hmm. It's not saying that the four score is exactly placing at midnight, midnight cry. It's just a door that would open up to other um, to other things, like it'll open up to events and so on. Yeah, like like I said in the beginning, this is something I just started studying. So if there's any corrections, please tell me. I'll I'll love love to hear them. But um, I've only been studying for about a week, and what I saw is that anytime you see it, it's bringing you to this time period. And we already know with Ezra 7, 9, it's the first day, first month, first day, fifth month, and they come and they come out of Babylon and reach, reach to Jerusalem on the first day, fifth month. And we know the first day, fifth month is midnight cry. And anytime you see the four score as a symbol placed in that story, it is going to bring you to that time period just in the other witnesses. Yes? It's always, when you're going to find four score, you can count as a symbol. You're always going to find that 80 between midnight and midnight cry. I'm not saying. All, all, you're, all you're doing is just proving it. It yeah. means different things it, it based can. on how the story surrounds it, mm -hmm. but it's always between midnight and midnight, midnight, midnight cry. cry. Yeah, that's how, that's how I'm seeing it for now. Okay. But as I go through it more and more with the fine, fine tooth coma, it may, may come out to be other things. I'm not being set in, set in stone on one, one thing. You got something? All right. Um... Oh yes, that, that's where I left off. Um, it, says, it says in verse 8 of chapter 10 of Deuteronomy that the Levites bear the Ark of the Covenant. And we know that from the last, last year's camp meeting in September that we, we know that the Ark is opened at midnight. Put Ark. And now they, the Levites see what's happening here because this is their first or second step. And then the third step is from midnight, midnight cry to Sunday law. And that's their... By the north period, so so from what what they see from here, they also take they they bear this ark in this time period to go 
to um, give a message and also to join in with join in with the church triumphant. And I told her there were 40 priests, which is Patriarch to Prophet 6, 14.3, and there were 220 Nesanims. So we're talking little numbers here on that history of Ezra that came out of, of uh, mm -hmm. Babylon. I'm not, I'm not sure how to place that at this moment. I'll have to go read it for myself and try to study it out. But um, yeah, this, this is basically um, what I see with four score. If there's any corrections, please let me know. Please show me these things. I'll, I'll, I would love, love to see. Um, yeah, that's right. That's that's where I'm ending then. All right. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Father God in heaven, I'd like to thank you f for this time so that we can look look at at your word, Lord. I pray that you may. Help us to be more like you. Have our mind and our traits and our heart and our actions, our gestures, our words to be like you, Lord. Pray me. Allow us to read, read more, look, look more toward, look, look more towards, towards heaven and be more like you, Lord. This is our prayer. Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.